Hello. Right. Well, I'm back, literally just back from uh, seeing a new movie by director Gareth Edwards, um, science fiction epic, some people might call it, uh, called The Creator. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the film in general and just the logistics of the movie, um, cast, that kind of thing, before I get into my opinion um, on the film. So I want to just talk about the film in general, first of all. Now, um, Gareth Edwards who is someone who, although I've not met personally, um, he is, it's going to sound a, a bit wanky when I say this, but he is a uh, close friend of several friends of mine. Um, so I got to hear a lot about the production rows of Rogue One. Um, I got, I had a couple of friends in Rogue One, actually. I had a couple of friends who did the reshoots of Rogue One. Um, and some actors I had worked with, three actors I'd worked with, uh, were in Rogue One. So I got a, I got a lot of firsthand information on what, a, um, a challenge it was for Gareth to produce a film he was happy with, uh, the original uh, cut was uh, not the one that went out. Um, so, uh, uh, you, you know, and um, there's a lot of scenes that were shot for Rogue One that you'll you'll see in early trailers that are not in the film. So I'm going to caveat this review a little bit with um, it's definitely Gareth Edwards' fingerprints all, all over it, um, but uh, I I do wonder. Um, how much say he had in the final cut of this movie. Um, did he have full control? Did he have final cut uh, or didn't he? I, um, I'd be interested to know that. And I'm not going to speculate further as to whether he did or didn't. I just would be interested to know. So, but it's very much his stamp. It's produced by him, directed by him, co-wrote the screenplay with uh, Chris Welts. Um, Chris Welts, if uh, you're not familiar with other stuff that, that he's uh, done. Um, he uh, did various, um, I mean, he direct, directed um, the film adaptation of the novel of the Golden Compass, um, was involved in Twilight. He also co-wrote Rogue One, again with Gareth, um, worked on things like American Pie about a boy. Um, so, you know, it's got... Um, he was co-writer on things like Ants with uh, the animated feature film with Woody Allen. Um, the Golden Compass was a was a disaster, uh, the 2007 production. It did have some merits, but overall it was a disaster. Um, oh, good to see uh, some of the regulars in. Cannoli's here. Uh, Cannoli, mate, if you've seen this film and you want to chat with me about it and you want to pop on, let me know. Um, Desert Phoenix is here. Um, uh, David Macy's here. Clipzilla, not familiar with you. Welcome to the channel. Movie kind of reeks. Well, we'll 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 talk about that shortly. Um, so I went with a friend of mine. We are of different generations. They were much younger than me. Uh, I'm just going to tell you now that they absolutely loved it. Um, they had tears in their eyes towards the end. As I say, they're a different generation to myself. Um, by some considerable margin. So, um, you know, what people think of this movie in their 20s may well be very different to what people in their 40s or 50s think of it. A couple of other things I want to say uh, before I dive in is I am a fan of science fiction. I am also a fan of Rogue One, of all the new Star Wars stuff. It is, um, for me, by far the best of the new Star Wars uh projects taylor swift greater than disney star wars is here again great to have you there um yeah i shouldn't star though should i because they look different in the chat so um all right so um on imdb the film currently has a rating of 7.3 out of 10 pretty respectable we've got 197 user reviews I think we might um, do a bit uh, a snapshot of some of the headlines. Now, this is a completely original piece of work. It's not an IP. It's not taken from a graphic novel, at least if it is. Um, I'm not uh, uh, familiar with that. Um, 
and uh and it's nice to see um an original piece because we don't we don't get original pieces of science fiction very often now that aren't taken from either another ip or a graphic novel or uh, you know this is this so um but that's one of the things that's nice about the creator is it is um it is an original piece of work um original story characters set up so the basic premise is that um in the in the past that uh, ai become became the norm in all the households um robots were kind of given all the menial tasks to do they became our butlers our servants they also worked in things like surgeries doctors and stuff like that they became extremely advanced and were able to to some degree experience emotions um and you know also essentially were like pet dogs in any given household um then unfortunately a nuclear detonation occurred in los angeles um ai was held responsible for that um uh over a million people were killed um and ground zero of um la is still uh unlivable um and there was um a war that followed on from that where the world became divided into two america and its allies banned ia permanently and uh, destroyed all ia and uh, ai sorry and ai robots and things like that and um then a sort of pan asian um government if you like it, it doesn't really say one country or another but a pan asian government was in favor of keeping ai along with china and so on and so the world became split in two and um to, i think it's 10 years after the destruction of la there's a charter signed in america where they're going to go to war with any country that supports um ai life rights i guess you would say and these robots live and will sort of walk among us there are various different types some of whom have the faces of humans but you uh, a human has to be prepared to sell the rights to their face which is quite an interesting little side plot that's it's not really a side plot it's a side note of of the um, world building i guess um what we get in the film is some absolutely incredible photography and images um from not only gareth edwards of course but the cinematography there are two dops on the film um greg fraser and Oren oran sofa uh, or sofa um now um but they present us with uh, a number of very striking images throughout the film one of the things that i was i was extremely impressed with was the quality of the special effects um most of the time you don't even notice that they are effects there were a couple of things that stood out where we go okay yeah that's a cgi building on a hill you know that kind of thing but um for the most part i was completely immersed in these images now um america has set up a multi-billion dollar project called nomad which is um a de defense system that's a picture of it right there uh it is designed to assist american combat operations against ai on the ground and when they discover i guess what you would call large infestations of them nomad deploys a, a missile and um uh, it's basically a, a, a sort of a, a mini nuke almost um nomad stands for north america orbital mobile aerospace defense system and it's the most advanced space station in the world capable of launching destructive attacks from orbit now there are a few plot holes with with nomad one is that it, um if it's in orbit and it's moving around the earth um it would only be in certain positions every so often um it's in a low orbit uh, i think we have to accept it as a given that it can move of its own accord at any time um to line up wherever it wants uh within pretty short space of time it has to be said uh that for me was a bit of a plot hole but it wasn't it wasn't the worst of some of the plot holes but uh but that that one was a bit like okay all right um but 
Uh, it's a very, that is very well done. Um, the CGI work uh, for the ship is incredible. Um, I like the design of it. It's appropriately creepy as well as sort of surgical. And um, now this film was made for a, an $80 million budget. So when you think about the amount that some of the Marvel films cost and you look at the cast that they've got here who we're going to come on to shortly, that's a pretty good budget. Um, you know, so uh, I, I think um, that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, the, one of the reasons that we got two... DOPs on it is because um, there was a schedule clash with June part two. Um, so as a result of that, Greg Fraser um, uh, uh, shared DOP duties with um, Oren Soffer. Uh, and this also started shooting in Thailand in January of 2022. So not that long after the pandemic. Um, and they shot in an ultra wide aspect ratio, two seventy six to one, um, which gave it gives it a really sort of epic big feel, and that definitely worked without a doubt. Definitely worked. Um, so I was, um, yeah, visually the film looks amazing. Um, there's a number of decent. Um, epic set pieces in the film all look very good. Um, yeah, so and I'll, I'll get get into those more in a in a, in a moment. Um, let's talk about the cast because we've got some pictures of actors coming up here. So, ostensibly, the plot revolves around um, an undercover agent whose job was to infiltrate um, AI settlements and track down um somebody who the military uh refer to as nim near 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 Marta. i think it's near Marta, near matter and um no one knows what near matter looks like but they're rumored to have created the ultimate ai weapon that could potentially take down the u.s military so undercover age an undercover agent is sent in to penetrate the um, Asian resistance and ideally to eventually find Niamata and then either assassinate them themselves or facilitate a special forces commando style raid that will do the same job. And our film effectively opens with such a mission being undertaken. Now, um, all right, let's get into cast before I come back to what I think of the film. So, cast-wise, this is this is a top-class cast. In your lead as the undercover agent, you've got John David Washington, who, of course, is the son of Denzel. If you shut your eyes, he has exactly the same voice that he is as Denzel Washington. I mean, you honestly wouldn't be able to tell the difference between their voices. Um, it's pretty uh, amazing. Hey, Sassy. Good to see you. Good to see Darth Plato as well. Thank you for popping in. Um, so uh, John David Washington is very good in this. He's he's every man, uh, every bit the actor, um, his father. You know, the apple has not fallen far from the tree. He's an exceptionally gifted actor. Um, I would say he's going to be as good as his dad within a relatively short space of time. He's pretty good now. Um, we also have Gemma Chan and we've got Alison Janey in a supporting role. So um, this actress I will come back to in a second. There's Alison Janey, who some people may remember as the mother in I, Tonya. She kind of plays a sort of not a typical role for her. I'm sure that's why she wanted it. She kind of plays a like a general um, battlefield general. Um, who is the head of the sort of special forces people. And she's determined to see this mission through to the end. And we almost get like our kind of team of aliens, Marines, you know, we get, we get our little squad of special forces, guys and girls all rippling with muscles and combat gear and 
combat vests and so forth. Um, so Sergeant Joshua Ch Taylor is our main character, as I said, played by John David Washington. He's undercover and he's trying to find near Marta. Now, um, Gemma Chan, if we've got a picture of her, um, is also in the film. She's got a fairly significant role. Um, and she was ironically in another show, a television, British television show, um, about, um, robots and so on with my friend Danny Webb, um, who there is an interview with, um, on the channel. And, um, yeah, she's very good in that Gemma Chan. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to get the cast list up cause we're not, we haven't got photos of everybody here. So, um, yeah. So Gemma Chan, uh, some of you guys are going to know her if you saw the channel Four production, uh, where she did play, um, a robot among other things. Um, she's also been in various other TV shows, um, and, um, movies and quite a successful career um you may have seen her recently in things like externals um but the show that uh, she was in I, i'm trying to remember humans thank you that was it humans um and she was very good in humans um she's playing more than one role in this and she's pretty good has to be said pretty good um so we also have one of my favorites um actors of all time ken wantanabe is in the movie uh he plays a fantastic character and here's a shot of him as that character um so he's a he's an ai as we can see spoiler alert um hey tommy good to see you man have you seen this film yet let me know um and david macy's been in two films with Je Gemma charm but sadly never met her because you you guys weren't lucky enough to be on the set on the same day um in addition to so we got ken wantanabe who's been in oh, so many films of mine um particularly a lot of the big sort of uh, east asia cinema historical epics uh so you'll catch him in, in a lot of films like that but he's been in loads of western tv shows and movies as well um so I want to give a special shout out to Madeline Univoyle. She plays a young AI in the movie. I don't want to get too much into spoilers with her character, but here she is. And uh, again, here, both stills from the film. Um, I don't know how old she is. She can't be older than 10. She's a phenomenal actor, and she has to do quite a complicated role with a lot of emotional beats and... Um, you know um it's 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 that would be a hard role for an adult actor to play let alone a 10 year old kid uh so um yeah i mean she's good she's really good actually uh one of the highlights of the film for me because a weaker actress could have really um you know destroyed that now ralph innocent um who a lot of people will know from the office and he's been in quite a few other things um green knight the um the witch and so on ballad of buster scraggs um he's had little parts and things like guardians of the galaxy uh he plays an american general in this uh, and i was quite surprised by that casting choice um he's fine but i think i would have preferred to have seen an american in that role that's just me um but i like ralph innocent as an actor i think he's very good um, just as a caveat to that. So, um, but me personally, I think I would have liked to have, um, now, you know, I like to shout out other actors who have smaller roles, several people I want to give a shout out to Amar, uh, Chada Patel is one. He's exceptionally good in this film, plays a couple of different parts. You may have caught him in the recent Willow TV series if you were actually able to get past the first two episodes, which I was not. So, um, yeah, he's uh, he's a good actor, very solid actor. Um, got a few other people that I've seen in a few other things, like Sturgill Simpson, um, Mark Manchasha. Um, I've seen them both in other, other movies. I was not familiar with Rad Pereira. Um, she gets to play the kind of the Vasquez character, 
um, in the movie. Uh, she's not in it a whole load, but she makes the most of what she's got. Uh, it's interesting that her character is called Lambert because, of course, that's one of the main characters in the film Alien. Um, and I feel like there's quite a few little nods um, to different people. You've got a character called Shipley. Um, and I wonder if that's a, a nod to one of Gareth Edwards' um, regular collaborators. But, you know, there's, there's a few of those. Uh, Veronica uh, Nago is very good in this also. Uh, nice part. Again, not a massive role, but she makes the most of it. Um, you could have seen her in The Old Guard more recently, The Five Bloods. Um, she's also Paige Tico in... So she's Rose Tico's sister in um, the prequel series, the sequel series, Star Wars. Um, yeah, so... Well, let's not talk about those. Um, she's good. She's good in this. She stands out, does a good job. Um, let's see if there's anyone else I want to give a shout out to. I, I, there, there was no point where I was watching the, the movie and going, hmm, not sure about this casting choice. But there were, as I said, there was one or two where I probably would have made a different choice personally. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone else is. Now, you can see how many producers by the way are on this film just look at that look at that production list there that's a lot of producers music's by Hans Zimmer feels very appropriate um the score was done uh, ahead of time actually which is quite rare and originally he was going to have a score done by AI but uh Gareth Edwards liked the Hans Zimmer score so much he just decided to stick with it so a little bit of uh trivia for you there um so was it any good? Um, in a word, and I'm a little bit conflicted, but my immediate gut reaction when I came out of the cinema was, "Oh shit, that was that was that was that was pretty fun." I was not bored, was never bored. Uh, it engaged me the whole time. But there were a few things that irked me. I've got to be honest. There were a few things that irked me. Now the last third of the movie. Has got more plot holes in it than a piece of Swiss cheese. There's a lot of um, stuff that they set up earlier that they break the rules with later on in the show. But the whole premise of AI went wrong, now the AI that's bonded with humans is wrong and they have to be separated and destroyed, what, despite the emotional damage that might do to the people that they formed bonds with, is a really interesting premise, and it's quite well explored in the film. Um, the central plot is is fine, it's okay, but there are a lot of plot holes. There's a lot of, well, hang on, if you've done that, then you could do this. And um, there's a lot of times where the kid could have used their special powers technically to stop shit from happening. Didn't quite need to leave it quite so long. Um, but I think because it's original and somebody actually got off their ass and said, right, I'm going to write something original, I've got to give it a lot of credit because we don't get a lot of original movies like this anymore. We don't get people taking the risks, and we, and and the, and the mid range, the mid sort of mid budget ranged films um, are the ones that are disappearing. So it's it's quite hard to get 60, 80 mil for a film. You know, people would rather you pay, um, you know, get two hundred million or shoot a film for under five. And the middle ground is 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 where the hard battles are fought trust me on that when it comes to financing the um ai that just want to live in peace and sort of live under the banner of the protection protection of this sort of asian conglomerate of countries um there's a lot of plot holes there at one point it's like okay so this is a cohesive country that we're attacking then at another point, it suggests that's not the case. Then it suggests it is the case again. There's also a lot of ambiguity over um, exactly where America, where America can drop reinforcements or attack easily and where it can't do so easily. Um, 
I was confused by a number of the, the, the various um, ways that, that America was able to deploy weapons, but in some circumstances, but not in others. Um, I found that a bit confusing. And at times it was a bit like, you haven't really explained how you can do that. Um, and I thought you said you could do this, but you can't do that. Okay. So there was a bit of that going on some of the time, which makes me wonder if there's a longer cut where some things were fleshed out a bit more. But i got to say, on the whole, I liked it. It's a good film. It's not the best thing I've ever seen. It's not even necessarily a great film because of some of those inconsistencies. But it is a good, solid piece of work. Visually, it's amazing. It's nice that there's something original. There's some good characters who, that are well-written. There's lots of characters that are sorely underwritten. Um, but the special effects for the most part are outstanding very difficult to tell which bits are effects and which aren't overall i've got to give it pretty decent mark i'd say i'd probably give it between seven and a half and eight out of ten. Eight out of ten for the technicals alone probably seven out of ten if i was just talking about the script the script is is sufficient but I could hear those board meetings where somebody would be saying, but we haven't explained that. Don't worry. It's just a movie. No one will care. Well, you know, we do care. Um, so I can, I can, I feel that, that there was probably a lot of that going on. Um, so, but look, I do, re this is a film definitely to be seen on the big screen. It, 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 it looks and feels epic. It should be seen on a big screen. I would advise people to see it on a big screen if they can um so but i would um yeah go and see it while it is still at the cinema because it's 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 one of those ones that's worth uh seeing there um so the majority of the film was uh shot near ben mung in thailand um including the um the principal photography um industrial light and magic and weta both worked on the visual effects along with a load of other companies including crafty apes and jellyfish pictures vh vfx los angeles i mean there's a huge number of effect shots in this movie um and i mean like i said there's one or two where i feel like somebody jumped the shark and went a bit cheap and, and cheerful because they they really jar because the rest of the film is so so seamless so I, I really rate the movie. Now, um, overall, I rate the movie. Yeah, seven and a half for, for me. I do recommend you see it. I think you should see it at the cinema. And as, as I said, it's an original piece of work, and that, that makes a big difference. It's so nice to see something that takes a few risks, um, and it does take a few risks, and some of them work and some of them don't. Now, I am going to be back online tomorrow night um starting a bit earlier about 9 15 but not on this channel i'm going to be on the critical drinkers channel at 9 15 tomorrow and we are going to be talking about john carpenter's 1982 superb feature film the thing which was largely maligned by critics when it came out and uh woeful uh shame on them for for, for doing so um so that's going to be on tomorrow at 9.15. Um, and then I've got um, a couple of other things uh, coming up as well. So I've got my next interview is on the 17th of October. I'm going to be away for a few days. Um, so I haven't got, I haven't lined up too much stuff to, to, to block everything out. But um, 2nd of October, you catch me on the Critical Drinkers channel talking about the thing. 17th of October. I'm back with an industry interview with Jeff Farley. I'm hoping to get Steve Begg, who's um, special effects coordinator, um, special effects director on God knows how many feature films. He was a good friend of my my late friend, the Alan, Mar Alan Marks. And I'm hoping I've, I've had a conversation with about it, with him about it, and he says he's willing. We should also be getting the producer, one of the producers of Boiling Point, to come on the channel talk about that show 
Um, you'll now see that four episodes of the TV series version of Boiling Point have dropped on the BBC. I've watched the first one today. I will probably be doing a gut reaction to it uh, probably on Tuesday. I just need to get some things locked down. But if I can, I'm going to do a gut reaction to it on Tuesday. Um, so, yeah, so that's it from me, guys. Um, I'd be interested to know what you think about the film. Put a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share the stream if you can, even, even better. And, uh, yeah, I will be back again definitely on Monday. I might I might uh, be on, on Tuesday. Um, and I'm doing oh, I'm do my weekly roundups back. I'm doing a weekly roundup on Wednesday where I'm going to be talking about all sorts of stuff um, that I've seen recently. So that's it from me. Take care. I'll speak to you again tomorrow.